Hello everyone, Moon Man here, and today we are back with the Steam Deck. But anyways, today I'm going to teach you all how to not only emulate, but to also use Steam Deck plugins to modify it, make it look all cool and stuff. So, this is how you start up with plugins. So you gotta go into settings, alright? Then you gotta go into certain setting that would say developer. Uh, that would be system settings. Then you gotta flip the switch that says enable dev dev mode. Once you do that, you gotta go down. Once you go down, you then have a new settings. It's called developer. You then have to turn on. Where is it? Uh, okay, you then have to turn on CF remote debugging. And then then you gotta leave and then I believe you got to restart your Steam Deck if it doesn't tell you to restart your Steam Deck then you are good to go for step number two step number two would be to go to the desktop now here here we are now for the Steam Deck you could actually use the right trackpad as a mouse cursor but for the sake of uh, continuity I actually have a, I actually have a portable mouse very tactical to my friends who know, who know that joke. It is a very tactical mouse. So, as you can tell, my tactical mini mouse is working. So now we just gotta, hang on, sorry guys, stand's kinda a bit shaky. I gotta get a new one sometime. But basically, now that, now that we have that handled, we then just go to Brave. And I will link the GitHub below, but it should be called the Decky Loader. And now, now you'll see there's three different versions. There's the latest pre-release. There's the testers plugin developers, and then the and then the legacy version, the unsupported old version. Now, if I were you, unless you have some really special reason why, uh, I would not get this at all. Just do not get this version. I didn't like it. Now. This one is, well, was in the title, honestly. This is for testers and, and like, and like, plugin developers. But, we are normies in this case, mostly. So, we should get the latest pre-release. Oh yeah, look. Told you guys. So, what you gotta do now is that, once you switch to desktop, you then have to make sure that you have a password set into into your command terminal. Now, if you go into all applications and you go to terminal, that should be all the way at the bottom, actually. In case you're wondering why like I'm doing things so slowly is because I am actually looking at my monitor, like my actual desktop monitor, and not the uh, deck itself. Doing this, so hang on. Uh. Where is it? I think it's... Oh wait, no, I think it starts with the K. I think it was like kernel terminal. Yeah, console. There you go. Okay, so once you... So once you get this, right, you gotta set a password. So what you gotta do is that you gotta type in... P-A... S-S-W-D. And then when you press enter, it's gonna... Well, for me, I already have it set, but so so it will tell me that it's changing the password for the deck. But for your case, it would say to set a new one. So let me just type in the one I already have. Now, in case you're wondering why nothing is popping up, it's actually for security reasons. This way, it won't show what you're typing in. So you just press enter, and then you can type in your new password. But for my case, I'm just going to type in the same thing, honestly. So hang on. Now you see? So... When you're retyping your new password, don't freak out that uh, that nothing's popping up. It's just for security reasons. I actually did too at first, and I was like, no, it So, point is, is that you got that, so you can just close the terminal for now. Or, or open it. Uh, close one up. So, once you choose which one you want, in my case, it would be this. So you just copy this, alright, 
and and if you're just strictly using the track pads off of the steam deck you just click here and then you copy but if you use a mouse then you just you know right click so then you go into back into console then you just simply paste it in there now in my case I already have it done but it would but you just paste it in there like that just flat you just flat up just paste it in there nothing really nothing really else has to be done you can't see it that well here but you get a basic idea so then once it's installed you just close that close this and then you go back to gaming mode once you're back in here wrong scene button now you'll notice that that there's actually a new a new icon there it it, it that it would be a power plug and now you'll see a new menu called the decky uh this is a more i guess you can say this is a more updated tutorial from the ones i used to watch but um so once afterwards you will see the shop icon on the top right you gotta tap on that and then you'll see more plugins that that you can download Mo bunch of these plugins have multiple uses like the power tools can have you adjust more about your power management css loader probably the most fun as you can customize how the how the deck looks which is always all that space shit and all that then we got the system toolbox now it does require root so if you're concerned about that i wouldn't install it but um pretty sure that's just more tools i don't think i have installed i'm i'm honestly not sure but and then if you if you need some uh, deck facts and questions about certain games, there's also that too. Vibrant deck, change the uh, saturation, the fantastic to adjust the fan speeds, but don't lower it too much or else then it'll overheat. Then you got music controls is when you have Spotify or something open in the background as yes, you could download Spotify and Discord, uh, which I actually have already. Uh, yes, you could, You it does have a, have a modification for that. You can pause games, which allows you to like pause the game and do something else, like switch to uh, desktop, like here. Oh, never mind, not there. That kind of just close Skull Girls. Okay. Then we have Proton DB badges, as I showed you before, the the upper left corner. Because sometimes there will be games that aren't compatible with the Steam Deck, but then if you just turn on uh, Proton G Experimental or Proton uh 7.0 or 04 then it, it'll allow you to run games that are normally not compatible then we have audio loader which is my personal favorite watch this guys i'm not sure you guys hear that but that is supposed to be the wii noise with some uh background music coolest thing ever you can actually be a dick if you want to put switch noises funniest thing ever but I don't have that downloaded. Uh, I don't have my go downloaded. Bluetooth is also very helpful. This way, instead of you just going to the settings manually every single time, you can actually just go here to Bluetooth, and you can just connect them automatically like that. So yeah, the point is, is that there's a lot of options that you got. Now you notice the the tag legacy. That's because, like I said, there's a legacy version which I really don't recommend at all. So you could, like I said, if you are like a like a like a crazy man, yeah, you could go ahead and go with that. But I'm rather just go with the new versions. So there you go, nice for plugins. So now that we got all that covered, now I can show you how to emulate the games. Now, if you notice, I can show you, show you guys something really magical right now, right? If you go into collections and then you go into here you'll see I have a bunch of consoles. I have PlayStation 2 games. And just to show you that it works right now, hang on, let me just load you something. Uh fuck it, we'll load you Tekken 5. For instance. Watch this. Wait. Now this is being run from the PCX2, I think. Yeah, PC, PCX2. That's what that's the emulator that's running on this right now. 
And if you go into practice, and then you go to... I don't know, pick a random character. Fuck it. Right here. And then look. You know. So it does work. Now, I mentioned before of how you should use emu deck. So, step one, obviously, to all of this is that you gotta get the ROMs. Now, there's two ways that you can either do it. You can either do it the morally... Well, I guess you can say the morally gray area way. Or, you can do it the actual, like, legal way. Now, the legal way would be to get the games yourself as like a disc or cartridge, depending on what system it is. Then you, I do know for the disc that you gotta put it into a disc burner. Then you didn't get the files from said disc. Then you get the ISO files or just, I don't know, the fucking ROMs. If I'm not wrong. I'm kind of thinking off of the top of my head. And then, but then for the spicy gray legal moral area way you 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 can go to such websites um but you can go to vim's lair you can go and get your games from your view if you if you like but before you proceed i actually forgot one thing while while recording just this moment you gotta go to discovery then you gotta actually download the emulators itself i know you're probably thinking why is it this fucking late I'm probably just gonna edit to where I make this scene or this part come up first before there's the, the tutorial. But just know that um, you gotta actually install before you even download Emu Deck. Before you even download Emu Deck, you have to download the the emulators. So if you go to games and then emulators. You got many options. Now, now, like I said, for some reason, RetroArch just does not work for me. So do not use RetroArch if you're using it on, on SD card. That's at least my experience. Now, but you could use stuff like Dolphin for your GameCube games. Uh, you should probably also use uh, Duck Station. It's probably the best for PlayStation 1 games. But recently, there was an update uh, that did break it. But then another one just came, this same video, that I'm, I'm assuming fixed its issue. Then we got the PCSX2, the PlayStation 2 emulator, 100% recommend. Zemo, Zemo, I don't know how to say it, Shimu, for the original Xbox. I don't know, yeah, I got many options. But if you want to download stuff, like arcades, this also works too. But if you want to download stuff for like, um... Like Game Boy, Nintendo, SNES, you, I'd, I'd recommend you guys get it like in, in, independently because they're not gonna work. Retro Arc is not gonna work. So, so once you get that up and running, right? So once you get all of them installed, that is that is when you must open each individual program before you even open up Emu Deck. So before you click install Emu Deck, you then have to go to each one that you downloaded. Like, PC, PCSX. Now, you'll probably notice there's just three different ones. Just, just use the basic one. And then when you open that up, it's like, oh, wow, cool. So then once you open that, you should be all good. Now, just be safe, because I did this too. You must just open up both versions. And then close that out just in case something happens you know here we are so we got an emu deck now you will see the screen here emu deck play all your retro games right uh we take care of everything configuration bezels gamepad configuration gamecube we we and more hotkeys now they do say that you can use retro arc but from my personal experience when i try to use retro arc that is a piece of shit that does not work for me no matter how hard I fucking try. Maybe it's because I used it on a SD card, but it just does not want to work whatsoever. So, unless you have it on a on the main hard drive and not on the SD card, then 
do not use retro arc on the SD card. It just does not want to work. I don't know why. But once you scroll down a bit, you can you can download it. Now I actually already have it here, but for the sake of this tutorial, I'll re-download it. So then when you download it, right, uh, you just gotta save. When you go into your folders and you go into your downloads, so let's say that we're executing it, right? This one saw emu deck. Cancel. Because I actually already have it right here. Now, when you're installing it, it's going to automatically install and it's going to ask you where you want it to be at. And then, and then you'll probably get the new patch. And then, yeah, here it is. So, if you are a baby, then you choose easy mode. If you are a Chad, you choose expert mode. But I am a baby. Then this is where you choose, you want an internal or, or SD card. And then that's when you get that part done. So you cancel it. Or I cancel it because I already did all that, so I don't want to redo it again. And then, afterwards, when you open up your folder, you should, uh, if you go into your, wherever you, down, wherever you had it, for example, it would be here. And you go to emulation, there should be one, okay, so when you open up em emulation, there should be the BIOS. The HUE packs, the ROMs, the saves, the storage, and the tools. What's that? But, so, once you get all your ROMs, no matter which way it is, I won't judge. You then put your ROMs into its, its respected areas. Like, if you got 3DOs, you put it here. 3DS ROMs, you put it in there. Like how I put all my dirtiest ROMs in there. Got your uh, fucking PlayStation games? Let me uh, show you where. Uh, ch -ch 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 -ch. Let me see. Yeah, PSX, PlayStation 1s. Remember, for you for you kids, it's the, the PlayStation 1 used to be called a PlayStation X. So don't forget that. PS2, PS3, PS4. Wait, they had PS4. Jesus Christ. So once you put everything in there, then you, then you, uh, because you want it to run, you gotta also go into BIOS and, and you and you gotta drop everything off in there too. That's where you would go here, and then that's when you would drop off all your BIOS, you know, for PlayStation One, you know, all that. Once you're finally done with all that, right? Once you put all the ROMs, once you put all the, uh. ROMs and, and, and each of the consoles in the ROM folder and once you put the BIOS folders into each of the individual BIOSes Then you just simply Close this then you make sure Steam is closed. You got to close Steam. You, you got to exit Steam Okay, once Steam is gone, that's when you open the Steam ROM manager So then once you're here, and also by the way, when you close Steam, the track pack, oh, never mind. I was about to say, because normally when you close out Steam, that's when this trackpad stops working since it's connected from Steam, but, weird. Well, I guess if it works, then it, then it works for you, good for you, but if it doesn't, then you're going to have to plug in a mouse. But, or tap on the screen if you want to be a dirty gremlin. But... Once you're here, you then scroll down a bit, overview, you don't really have to change anything, but if you want, you can allow a joke or NSW artwork. Then when you go to preview, oh here, you should also click save. There you go. Oh, there is. Ah, shit. That's nice. Okay. So, then, so next, you gotta click to preview. And then assuming you did everything right. If you click Generate App List, then it should get all your options here. And you can actually set individual settings to each of the emulators here, if you like to. But, you go to this, but like for example, let's, let's view our PlayStation 2 artwork, right? And then we, then we look here. Now, now if you're like, what the hell is this? 
I don't, I don't want this bullshit as my cover. Well, you can actually change it. Like that. Oh, wait. Like that. There's many different styles that you can use. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Okay, I'll, I'll use this. Alright, so you can customize them. And not just that, too. You can actually customize the posters as well, if you like. Like, let's say that you're not a fan of the way, uh, let's say, GTA 3 looks. No, no, no. Let's say that you're not a fan of San Andreas, right? Then you can click. Then it, then you can change its styles, you see? To make it fit. To make it fit with the other... To make it fit, like, with the other two games. There you go, you see? Now, now they all look proper. And then of course, there's many other things that you can change up too about the games, like the logos and all that. Pretty cool, pretty cool. So, once you once you change up everything that you need, alright, uh, you know, then once you've done all that, then you do save app list. Now, if this is your first time doing it, it will take a few minutes like four to five minutes to to actually get it done and working you can see it from the event log it will show you when it's done as soon as you see done adding removing entries then you're good but do not close it before it says that because if you don't if you interrupt and you don't let it complete then some of the artwork will not load in steam so then once you're done with that you close that and then you return back to gaming mode so once that's done, and by the yes, the mouse cursor does work in in the gamer mode, but I just prefer using the controller or the handheld itself. So then once that's done, you should see if you've done everything correct up until this point, then you should see in your in your collections these these, all right. And you can and it actually makes a whole another category for the emulators themselves. Well, if you've done everything correctly, then yes, then these should be separate into its own groups. All the games in 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 the right order with with the custom artwork that you applied, and then you can just start playing. Uh, let's just do um, fucking uh, manhunt. Sure. See, look, it works. So you see, so it does work. Now, of course, because this is emulation, it's not going to be perfect. So, if you find that, that it's lagging or something like that, you just go to emulation, and then you just go to the emulator that the system is running on. Like, let's see here. Why do I still have retro art? Oh, it's PCSX2. I was saying it wrong. So if you go to PCSX2, you will notice there's actually... You can actually adjust it, actually. If you go to settings... Now, in case if it does not work, if something goes wrong with the BIOS, it might be with the with the, with the the emulator itself that, that you might have to change things up and browse where things are, but you should be good. You can change up the... The interface, you can change up the system settings, the graphics, in case if it's not running well for you for some reason. The aspect ratio. Now, because it's a smaller screen, I actually don't mind running on a standard 4x3, so it actually looks normal. So, you could actually do all this if you like. Memory card con configuration, all that stuff. Now, if you don't know what you're doing, and you're like, oh shit, my game's fucking up on me, then the easiest thing you can decide to do is run it on Vulkan, or sometimes you might have to run it on software, depending on games like Def Jam Vendetta, and then you can change up some settings here, like the rendering and uh, display. Like, for example, like let's say that the game's lagging too much, and you might want to lower it down back to native, which is 4DP. But if it's fine, then you can run it on 720p. And then once that's done, you just close that, and then you, then then you call it that. So let's say that you're having problems like loading into a PlayStation game, right? Like let's say, well, depending if Duck Station actually fix its bug. Uh, let's say that you want to play Dead or Alive, right? 
and then you're having trouble with this you just uh, close this then you go to duck station then you can try to see if you can fix it from here and then then you can like configure a lot of stuff Let's see here, if we go to bio settings and open that in explorer. Now you see, this isn't the fault of me or of Emudic not working, it's just because for some reason I'm also having trouble with Game Boy games. You see. But, I put my 3DS games. Does work. And you can make it to full screen and you can customize everything here. Emulation, view, multiplayer tools help. Like, you can't customize it from there. If you like. And you press start, and yeah, it does work. The, the game does work. Right. Yeah, so it does work. So it's all a matter of tinkering with the system, really. I mean, it is basically a PC in your hands. Alright, so today I taught you guys how to emulate and how to customize your plugins. And uh, maybe next time, because we are running out of time here. I will teach you guys how to mod outside of like how to mod outside of the deck like mod like modding outside of steam steam workshop so hopefully you guys all enjoy this is your guy here moon man